Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk 12 volts. Um, obviously in Teslas, but uh, I'm going to go back through why we have 12 volts in EVs and other vehicles and uh, um, why we continue to even after all these years and all this technological innovation. What you're seeing here is the 12 volt battery Tesla used in the early Model S. Um, for a long time. This is a 12 volt AGM battery. It's rated at 33 amp hours. Weighs about 27 pounds or 18 kilograms. It's very heavy. These things typically last about two to four years in the Model S. Um, a lot of owners hate it. I wonder why we still have such a thing. Um, so let me let me touch on why that is. So in the uh, early part of the 1900s, we first started seeing electrical systems and automobiles, you know, obviously outside of electric cars, which were prevalent at the time, but even in internal combustion cars, we saw battery electric systems and magnetos obviously need to generate a spark. Uh, lighting, er the early cars were, were carbide lights, but then electricity was being used more and more. In 1912, I think, Cadillac introduced the electric starter. So there was an, a reason to have a really large storage battery. I think at the time everyone was using six volts and really it's just the number of cells and a six volt battery only have three cells for lead acid. So it's just simpler construction. Um, obviously later on they added three more cells. You can see them here bulged out one, two, three, four, five, six. And that gives you about 12 volts nominal. Um, the, obviously, it's a more complicated battery with more cells, but as you increase the voltage, the current goes down. So um, rather than having a, a wire the size of your thumb running to the starter, now it could be just your index finger. Um, so there, there's definitely a good reason to have higher voltages, but kind of once, uh, once 6 volt was phased out, you know, sometime, I guess, it, between World War II and the 60s, um, we kind of settled on 12 volts, and because the automotive industry is cost sensitive, you know, suppliers that make light bulbs and motors and all kinds of other stuff, uh, 12 volts was just the standard, so it's it's remained that way today. And this is why EVs still have 12 volt systems. You still have lights, headlights, motors, window motors, uh, actuators, cabin fans, you, you name it. All that's already there's there's already thousands of suppliers around the world making those things. So when you're building an EV, you're gonna to go to that supply bin um, rather than ask a supplier to make a custom light. And obviously it's just not feasible to, to make everything run off the high voltage pack voltage. Imagine running 400 volts to a dome light. A lot of people don't know about electrical safety, but like I can put my fingers on this 12 volt battery and I can't feel anything at all. Probably even if I was sweaty, I wouldn't be able to feel anything. But somewhere up around 50 volts is, is the point where you're going to start feeling it. And then the danger increases kind of exponentially from there. Um, you know, by the time you get to 100 volts DC, that can be pretty lethal. A lot of people said, oh, I've been shocked by 120 or even 240 volts, um, you know, from their, their AC mains voltage. And it hurt, but it wasn't a big deal. One thing to note is that AC voltages, like in the U.S., uh, 120 times a second, the current completely stops flowing and reverses direction. In Europe, it's 100 times a second. And that's just the nature of AC, but that gives your body, like your nerves and your muscles, time to recover. So you can let go of, of, a, of a, a shock uh, during that zero crossing time pretty easy. But with DC, there's continuous flow, locks up your nerves and your muscles, um, and it hurts. <laughs> Um, so yeah, DC is definitely more dangerous for a given voltage. And as the voltage goes up, the danger goes up, you know, exponentially. So, you know, you, you may think, oh, I've been shocked by 240 volts. It wasn't a big deal. You know, what's, what's 400? 400 can kill you pretty quickly. It can, you know, saturate your nerves and it, your nerves can no longer conduct, um, fire the muscles. Your diaphragm can lock up, your heart can stop. It just depends on where the current flows. Anyway, enough on the safety. Um, it's always important to talk about it. I've had some criticisms in my videos where, um, 
you know, casually, you know, running around without high voltage gloves, exploring the pack, you know, been, it, 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 obviously it's probably not the best thing in the world. And I wouldn't advise anyone to, to be uh, so nonchalant around high voltage, but I've done it for many years. I always make sure I'm, you know, only touching one thing at a time. I'm on my insulated shoes and I'm, I'm pretty careful. In addition to the fact that the pack is generally discharged if I'm going to work on it. Anyway, that's the 12 volt. Um, this is probably half the size of most modern car batteries because this doesn't have to start the car. This just has to start the high voltage system and run the accessories. And mainly the, what it's being used for is to keep the computers online. So in Tesla's, <clears throat> all the connectivity features are there. Um, they do go to sleep now, um, but if you're running, you know, something with higher power, like you're running some uh, summon or, um, you know, sentry mode, uh, those computers have to stay online. They draw a lot of power. So those things will come from the 12 volt system. And then when the 12 volt system gets low, the main contactors will close and recharge the 12 volt. So the 12 volt is like in a normal car, you start it. And as soon as you start the car, the alternator replenishes the charge. So you're only losing a few percent of that battery with each crank and then it immediately recharged and let us the batteries are happiest if they're fully charged whereas in an ev the car's parked and it's keeping the computer alive and that just slowly drains the battery down to you know somewhere around 50 percent and which is when the you know either the gateway or vc front depending on which tesla you have wakes up the high voltage system and uses the dc to dc converter to recharge the battery. It does a proper, you know, complete charge on the 12 volt and then opens the contactors again. And that's called vampire, vampire loss or phantom drain. Um, that's where you know, lose miles from a car that's just parked. If you disconnect the 12 volt battery system and the high voltage is shut off, it won't lose miles. Uh, you can probably park the car for a month and you won't lose maybe a mile. Um, but keeping the computers on definitely comes with a penalty. People want the connectivity features and you want the car to be able to wake up fast when you get in it. So that's, that's what's going on. Now let's get this chonker. Well, actually, let's compare this versus what Tesla's replaced it with. This is a new lithium-ion battery that's used in the Plaid compared to the, you know, 27 pounds or 12 kilograms of this. This is only about 4 pounds and 1.8 kilograms obviously physically much smaller, but it is much less capacity. It's only 6.9 amp hours versus the 33 here. So let's get this chonker off here. So um, I basically had to destroy this to get in it. Like many of the modules that are weatherproofed in, in Tesla's new cars, um, this was a was sealed shut with an epoxy around here. Actually had to break the casting to get this off and it's bent and three dimensions and pieces of it are missing. Did not want to come apart. So if you have one of these in your new Tesla, don't take it apart, you know, watch my video and hopefully it'll save you the need to destroy your battery. They have a, you know, high, volt or high current connection here. It's got an interlock, so there's two pins and then a, th a third pin here, which is LIN data, which I'll, I'll talk about later but that's how this communicates with the rest of the car. <clears throat> Inside here we have three, uh, 108, or sorry, six 180 amp FETs. They're 180 amps each, and they're arranged in series so that they can block both charge and discharge intelligently. And then there's a current shunt here that can detect the current uh, draw uh, so that this controller can monitor it. There's individual taps in here so they can monitor individual cell voltages in a, in a thermistor to monitor temperature. Now this is a, I believe it's a, you know, total of eight cells and they're arranged in 2P4S. And what that means is two cells are in parallel and then those groups of four parallel cells are in series and that gets us our system voltage. Now note, this is not a lithium iron phosphate chemistry. I believe that this is, um, you know, Lithium, standard lithium ion chemistry. I don't know which. It's probably using the 2760s. It looks about the size for that, maybe a little larger. I don't know. <clears throat> so uh, the system voltage on this is going to be much higher than a normal 12 volt system. 
at, at, at fully charged, this is around 16 volts. So um, definitely not not the same as we've been used to, but still within the range that most 12 volt accessories work the same as they always did. Now, obviously, we don't have incandescent bulbs. If we if we did still have incandescent bulbs in the car, that would be a concern. They would definitely not last as long. But anyway, the, the job of this in the Tesla doesn't have to have a lot of capacity because it only has to keep the computer alive and the computer's sleep. So it, basically, when the car is in deep sleep, the only thing that's still on is the cell modem so that if you open your app you and you wake the car, if the car's in deep sleep, you'll it'll basically just sit there and spiral while it sends a command over the cell network, which then wakes up the, the ice and the, the computers come online. <clears throat> when that occurs... The car uses power from the 12 volt system to charge the high voltage system up, basically brings the high voltage bus up equal to the the current high voltage pack voltage so the contactors can close safely um, and there won't be any arcing. Um, <clears throat> so that's all this has to do is get the high voltage up, close the contactors, and then the DC to DC converter inside the PCS or power conversion system takes over recharges any energy that was lost from here and then powers all the accessories in the car um the if, if the car is left sitting sitting too long and this discharges the uh vc bat uh controller in the car will i think it asks vc front to wake up the car and does a complete charge of this and then it goes back to sleep so it's this this should never die in normal usage um, the only way this would die is if there isn't high voltage for some reason or the high voltage battery was run dead. In that case, this will run the car, you know, as long as it can. And then this internal battery management system will open these FETs to prevent damage to this. And then the next time you're, you know, you did obviously then have to jump the car. And let me show you how that works. <clears throat> so here's the harness, part of the harness. This is, uh, let me get the ruler out of there. So this is connected here and uh, carries the high current. The black terminal goes to chassis ground. The red terminal stops off at this little jump post so that in the event this is dead, you can attach a normal jumper cable here or jump pack and re-energize the 12 volt system so it'll wake up. And then if you had a EVSC connected to your charge port, the car would start charging and then recharge this and you'd be good to go. This goes to the VC front ECU, which I guess we can take a look at. So here, we're running out of space. Let's move some stuff. <clears throat> so this is called VC, <laughs> VC BAT um, in Tesla nomenclature. This is another thing that was epoxy sealed, this top plastic cover would not come off. I had to basically break the plastic around here. Um, it's definitely glued in. You will destroy it if you if you try to open it. But this is direct, the 12 volt battery directly connects here. Um, and then uh, they use current detection and FETs to control the power distribution. So there are no fuses. If, uh, if the current detection and these are the current shunts that monitor that. If if the load in question is pulling too many amps, uh, a chip in here will detect that and open the load by switching off the FET field effect transistor that's connected to that load. It can do so faster than a normal fuse, so it's actually better protection. And then it's computer supervised by a, a power PC, automotive power PC uh, microcontrol in here made by ST. It's called the SPC5 series. That's running the whole show. Um, and basically, they've split the 12 volt system into two sides. So this is on the driver's side of the car in the US, connects the 12 volt battery, provides some of the high current loads, like the fan and the braking system, some of the other stuff that's on the driver's side. And then there's a bridge that comes off of here and goes to VC front, which I'll do in a separate teardown. And that is the other half of the car, basically. <clears throat> so all this, I think this is, you know, monitoring the charge, you know, keep, keeps track of the charge level. This is able to communicate over LIN 
to the battery management chip that's in the 12 volt lithium battery and that's how it, it keeps track of it. So let's take a look at that. So this little IC here is made by NXP. It's a microcontroller that um, is programmable and they call it the battery monitoring system. Um, it communicates by LIN, which is a single wire networking system called Local Interconnect Network. You can Google it. There's uh, a lot of excellent resources on the web if you want to learn about LIN. But it's basically a low-speed serial bus that's bi-directional. Um, there's a master in, in LIN, so the master is the VC bat and the SPC5 microcontroller that's in there. Communicates over LIN to this. And this basically monitors all the cell voltages, the temperatures, and controls these FETs. So when this thing is fully charged, if power is still coming in, let's say you were externally charging it, it could open the, the FETs that control charge and disconnect it, but the load could still flow through these FETs. So uh, it, it's, it has bidirectional switching capability. Um, this does not appear to have a heater in it. And this is just mounted, you know, under the front, so it will get cold. I imagine Tesla just um, waits for the car to warm up, or maybe they intentionally load it. Uh, you know, they, if they reduce the PCS voltage when the car first starts, and this has got some capacity in it, they can, you know, basically run it down a little bit uh, at high current to cause it to heat up, and then they can recharge it from PCS. That's my guess on the strategy they're using. Um, yeah, that's the only disadvantage. You cannot charge most uh, types of lithium batteries below zero, or you'll get uh, you'll get damage. You'll get electrode plating and other problems. So um, definitely, if you're in the north and this is below zero, sitting overnight when the car first starts, it's it's going to run the car fine, but it will not be able to recharge until it warms up. So yeah, I I don't know what happens if uh, they've got to have some strategy to warm it up. Or maybe they found that just the temperatures under the frunk are warm enough. Maybe the case. Anyway, yeah, so I'll put all the, the part numbers for all the stuff in, in the description. It's an MM9Z1638, made by NXP. Obviously, this is running Tesla's custom firmware. It does show that this is CAN capable, but they did not use it. It's just LIN. So it's kind of like this application. <clears throat> anyway, um, back to this. So um, Tesla, the architecture Tesla used in starting in the Model 3 had one large central controller called VC Front. And now in the Plaid, they've separated both VC Front into two ECUs called VC Bat and VC Front. Each kind of they're together they're about the same size as the original VC front but now they've got double redundancy so I think that's why they did that anyway uh, that's about all I have for the 12 volt system I took it apart so you don't have to um, I was asked uh, by several people if um, accepting donations to keep buying parts um, yeah I am in the About Me page of my channel, there's a link where you can donate uh, both monthly and one time. Any any money I received will help us do more teardowns on the channel. <clears throat> so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to try to do a minimum of two videos a week if I can at this rate, um, work permitting. But keep in mind, this is this is a hobby for me. I'm doing it because I enjoy doing it, um, but I don't always have the time. Anyway, that's all I have today. Take care, everyone.